Hi, this is Sherry. Welcome to My Journey in Clay, where we talk about all things pottery related. In my last video, we did a plaster press mold for a shingled roof. And in today's video, we're going to use that press mold to make a candle house. This is one that I made previously. We have the pattern pieces that we will use and the roof comes off. You can put a candle in here, you can put a real candle in here, or you can use one of the uh, electric candles. So let's get started. So first we'll talk about the uh, tools that we're going to be using today. I have a rolling pin, of course, to uh, roll my clay out, a cutting tool, a pin tool, which I'm going to use to uh, mark where I want to cut on the uh, clay from the pattern pieces. I have some cutouts. This will, is for my window, and then I have these little cutouts that uh, will do different shapes. So I have round, I have heart shape, tear shape. I have several of these. I have a bisque press mold for my shutter which I made uh, several years ago. If you don't have this, of course, you can um, use another tool. If you don't have that, you can use a little tool to make little indentations for your shutter. Have my metal rib, and I have extruders that I will use to uh, embellish the house. What I will do is I will roll several slabs out and put them on this board which has a plastic um, bag around it, and then I separate my slabs with newspaper. I wrap that up, leave it for a day or two while it gets, uh, I would say, soft leather hard. So we'll go ahead and we'll uh, start cutting some of our pieces here. Now this one, I'm going to need two. So I'm going to, it's a, the clay, I'm going to turn this around. It's a little thin there. And when I cut it, I just sort of gently hold it while I am uh, cutting it. I try to be as precise as possible. Of course, there's a lot of given clay. But the more precise it is to start, it seems to uh, ensure a better fit when, it, when you try to put it all together. And we'll have some extras, which I will use for some of our smaller pieces. Now, once I've cut this, what I have marked where the windows are. So I just take my pen tool, make a little mark. And then I can see where, the, where I'm going to be um, making my window. So all our pieces have been cut out and we are ready for the next step. I'm going to set these over here, do them one piece at a time. I'm going to start with the roof. The, uh, we have two pieces for the roof. 
One of them has already been pressed because I did it in my previous video talking about how to make a plaster press mold. I'll just do this other piece. This is my mold, my press mold for the shingles. I'm going to take this piece, which I have already uh, ribbed to be smooth, and press. When I, uh, when I push this in the press mold, I start with the corners and work in and the sides, and I push it inwards. The reason we do this Again, I, I went over this in the previous uh, video about press molds. The reason we do this is to keep from distorting it. The pressure that you want to apply is firm. You don't want to smash it, but you do want to feel that it is um, getting the texture from the mold. This, I see that there's a little bit of plaster in here, so I'm going to um, uh, get that out before I place it with my other pieces. I'll do that in a minute, though. The other molds that I'm going to use are uh, ones that I have made previously. This one is what I'm going to use for the uh, walls, and this is one that's a it is a, another plaster press mold that I made from one of the trees out in the back of my house. I took a, I did the same thing as I did with the shingle press mold in the previous video. I took a piece of clay and I pushed it up against a tree, the bark of the tree, and then I made the press mold. So I will show you this first piece to give you an idea. So this is one of the sides of the house. On the back, I have marked where the window is going to be. So what I'm going to do is I am going to press the uh, piece, the clay piece here. Again, then start at the corners and the edges. And so what I'll do here, when, the reason I talked about the uh, markings for the window, is I, I am not going to a press where the window is so that it keeps it kind of smooth. Okay, we have this piece. my chimney I'm going to do brick so I have a brick press mold For the um, bottom piece, which is going to be the floor, I'm going to uh, make it stone. So I have a, <clears throat> a stone press mold. I'm just taking the, uh, the very edges of this and just rounding them just a little so they, so they won't be sharp. For this, I'm just going to press the end of it because that's the only part that's going to be showing. So it will look like this, where just the end of it has the stone, because the walls of the house are going to be here. So here are all my pieces cut out, ready to go. And our next step is going to be cutting out the windows, cutting out the doors, and um, putting a back on them and making a little cutout. For each of the pieces that have windows or doors, if you remember, we took a pin tool and made a little mark. 
so I know where my windows are going to be. I have a um, cutter here that I use. It's just a little rectangular one. So I'm going to match it up to the dots. Set this little piece of clay aside. I'm also going to make a little window up at the very top. Little heart window. I'll do it on the other side. No, I'll do it. So now what I want to do is I want to make a backing on these. So I'm going to take this piece that I cut out from the window and I'm going to roll it flat. doesn't have to be perfectly um, rectangular. Then I'm going to get my scratching tool, scratch all four sides of the uh, window, get my slip. You can see I rolled this uh, very thin. Then I'll just take my uh, my tool, any any tool that uh, you think will work and really do this, this, this just helps attach it. And then I'll run around and uh, make it make it smooth around the edges. For this top window, I'm not going to uh, do that. I'm just going to leave it like this. So now uh, what we have here is we have our the side of our house with the window and next thing that I'm going to do which normally what I would do is I take all my pieces do all these windows and then do the cutouts but for demonstration purposes I'm just going to show you how we do the uh, cutouts and the window for just this one piece as I said I had several little cutouts here in this case I'm going to use the heart theme and I'm going to make little cutouts here. You can do whatever you like here. You can make little squares. You can make designs. Uh, I just thought the, the hearts would be nice. So here we have our cutouts and then the next step is to put something around the window. I'm going to make shutters. So I'm going to scratch either side of the window. Over here I have some clay which I have uh, colored with some mason stain that I worked into it. You can either I'm going to roll this a little bit thinner than what it is. You can put glaze on your windows when you're done if you want them a certain color. Um, I'm, I like to have the color already on. It makes it very neat that way. Um, but you do have to mix your uh, stain in with your clay before you do that. So I'm going to go ahead and even though this doesn't look like it has coloring in it. It does. So I'm going to um, use my uh, press mold for my shutter, make two shutters. And I'll take, before I cut them, doesn't have to be before you cut them, but I just find it easier. I will scratch the back so that they will uh, adhere and then cut my shutters. I do frequently check to make sure there's not little bits of clay on my knife too.
To attach the shutters, I'm going to do the same thing. I've already scratched this surface where they go. Put a little bit of slip here. I'm going to make sure that my shutters um, are lined up the same way so that the little uh, louvers here are facing in the same direction. Just want to make sure of that. And then I will just gently press with my finger the whole length of the shutter, making sure that the edges are firmly adhered to the clay. So here we have our first piece cut out. I've got the shutters. I could make more embellishments on the window here. Uh, maybe a little something up at the top, but I um, haven't decided yet. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other pieces. We're on our last piece here, and this piece is a little bit different because in addition to a window, we have a door. So I have cut out the door. That was just a, a freehand cut. And it's going to be a little bit different because we don't do the shutters. What we're going to do is we're going to do a little extrusion. So I have some, um, some soft clay here and my extruder, which these can be picked up at a clay supply store, or it's called a clay gun, or um, your local craft store should also have them. You just roll a, um, a thin little log of clay. And this, the one I'm using, there are many different, uh, you can see all the different, they have uh, large holes, they have uh, small holes, they have uh, what we call flat what I call flatties all different shapes this one is that I have in here is a uh, th three-parter if you can see this and it's going to come out like this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, scratch all around the perimeter of the door. Now, because this clay is so soft that I just extruded, I don't bother um, scratching that. I'm going to sort of round it out so it will fit. Place it on the outside of the door here, on the perimeter of the door getting the, the um, flat part against the uh, wall itself. And I'll just cut this at the bottom. Just gonna press a little more to make sure that it's secure. All right, there we go. And I also will do a uh, little tiny doorknob instead of my um, scratching tool for the doorknob i use my pin tool because it's a very small little um, scratch that i want to make so i just scratch it a little here roll a little tiny ball make sure i don't get too much slip i just want a little bit Place it in there. Okay. There's the finished piece. What we have now are the pieces to our house. And so the next step of this is to assemble it. Before we assemble it, the first thing we need to do is to prepare it. So 
to prepare it, I'm going to scratch every surface that's going to be attached. So on my um, outside pieces here, I'm going to scratch here where we are going to uh, put the um, front and side of the house. I'm going to scratch along the bottom because that's going to go here. I'm also going to go ahead and scratch along the sides here because our roof is going to go there. So I scratched here, 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 and on both sides. And then I will do the same thing for this one. Bottom, insides, top, where the roof will go. Set this down. For these pieces, the front and side, I'm going to scratch the bottom. I'm not going to scratch the bottom of the door here because it's very thin. And then this is going to abut to this. So I'm going to scratch here on this side, not inside, but here. I don't need to scratch the top here because that's not going to um, uh, have anything. Well, the roof will be over it, but it'll be fine. So scratch that. Same thing, scratch the outside edges. Scratch the bottom piece. Now the roof will have to be scratched too, but we don't need to do that yet. The floor will have to be scratched. I usually do that as I go. Uh, we have not put the chimney together yet or uh, cut the other lip piece, but we don't really need to do that yet. I'm going to start with the floor of the house on my uh, hardy back with a piece of paper between. I have a turntable that I use to uh, move around so I can get to each side easy. I'm going to scratch a little bit on the sides here and along this edge. I'm going to wait to do the front to make sure where that piece is going to go. So I'm going to start with the side piece. Remember we already scratched everything. So I'll go ahead and I'll slip here and put this down, lining up the edges here. Gently push. Usually take my water bottle or something to um, brace it until I get some uh, clay in there. I'm going to take my back piece here. I'm going to put slip on this side along the bottom. And I also I'll put some on this piece too. And remember, this is already scratched everywhere where it's going to be uh, up against the clay. What I'm doing here is I'm just pressing against this gently. I'm holding it so that I don't push it and just pressing it. Running my fingers along the bottom here, gently pressing down. So on the inside, this is what it looks like now. I'll take my tool. You don't have to do this part, but I usually do and just sort of uh, run along the edges. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and coil these pieces. So I'll get my uh, soft clay here. And I'll just roll a thin little coil. I've already got plenty of uh, slip on there, so I really don't need to put any more. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to leave a space here because I'm going to have another piece. Just gently push it in. Get some uh, along the other side here. And also along the uh, inside edge here. Now this clay is very soft, so I don't really need a, 
tool to help me uh, with it. Kind of doing this backwards so that the uh, so that I can face the camera here, or so that the house can face the camera. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and turn this around a minute so I can get this piece. Again, you just want to uh, take your finger and uh, push it into the seams and get it uh, neat around the edges. Sometimes at this, uh, right up here, sometimes I will put a little bit of extra uh, just to make sure because that's where it might have a tendency to separate and again, I'll go down the sides So we have this side piece we have the back this is the piece I would do next I would save the front for last So this is what we have now. Our last piece is our front piece, which again has already been scratched. I have not scratched the here though, because I was waiting to see exactly where it was going to hit. So now I can see I've got a little bit of extra uh, where the uh, stone impression is. Slip. And gently place it in. Sometimes you will have to uh, cut a little bit of this if it's a little bit too wide. Let me turn this around a moment. Okay, in this case, it is a little bit too wide. So I'm going to have to make a little bit of a cut here. I probably distorted it perhaps a little bit when I was uh, making the door or I'm not sure, but at any rate, it needs to be cut out just a little. So I'm going to move this a little bit. go scratch again to make sure that everything is gonna combine and stick here there we go okay and then I'm gonna coil inside here Okay, I usually keep a little damp sponge uh, next to where I'm working in case my fingers just start to get too much clay on them. Now what we have here is we have it, all of the walls up. We need to uh, go over everything, uh, make sure that, uh, that the walls are really joined. Um, you can see for example, in the in the front here, it needs to just be joined a little bit better, so that you have a a, a seam, so that it's not showing a seam there. So just sort of go over your whole piece. 
look for anything that needs to be fixed. Look on the insides, make sure that your all your coils are smooth. Just, you know, take another look at it. Don't be in a hurry. Pay special attention to uh, the corners here and here where it joins because that is a place where it has a tendency to separate. Um, another thing that I do is move the house over and press from the bottom up a little bit to make sure that there's a, a, a firm connection there. I'll do that, move around each side. At this point, we're ready to put the roof on. And if you do get interrupted and you can't finish your uh, house, you do want to at least try to get your roof on because these pointy pieces up here, they're gonna have a tendency to dry out. For our roof, it's gonna go on pretty quickly. We have two pieces. Check to see that your uh, shingles are in the right direction. Then I, uh, Take my roof and put a slight bevel. Long tool. Okay, just a slight bevel so that um, those, so that the two pieces will fit. You want to do that to both uh, pieces of your roof. Take your scratching tool, scratch the top. Now what I do is I hold this up, I'll do it backwards so you can see. I sort of hold it up to the roof to see where these are going to meet. So it looks like here and here, and then I will scratch there. And what we're going to do then is we're going to put slip on the wall here and here. and on the roof itself. Then you want to place it um, so that it is, there we go, let me show you on this side. So you can see I've got plenty of room on the sides. You want it so that it is just above this, uh, the top here. Press it down and then again you want to uh, coil. You want to coil this piece. You want to go not all the way, we're going to cut this off so you don't want to take your coil all the way down. So let me turn this around and give you an idea of what it's going to look like. That's the inside. So you can see, I haven't taken it all the way to that wall. I think you can see that. We're going to take our other piece. Do the same scratching along the center top. Hold it up. I already have an idea of where it's going to be, but you can hold it up as we did on the other side. Also, if you're 
making this for somebody, you can also write something on the inside of the roof here or put your initials in here. I'll do that. Get your slip. And attach. You see this has a tendency to bend in so when you attach this other piece sort of push it out to keep it straight. So our roof is completely attached now. I just went around and just made sure everything was secure. Now this piece that we have for the lip, we're going to take this and uh, cut it in half uh, lengthways. I use a ruler to make sure that my line is nice and straight. Okay, now once that's cut, we can uh, set these aside. And here comes the fun part, cutting off the roof. Now to do this, I usually take my ruler to get an idea. I want to go, I, I want to have enough of an angle that this piece, I might have to trim this piece a little, but this piece is going to end up here. So I want to make sure that I cut ab above where the uh, sides meet. So I would say about here. And I'm not cutting yet, I'm just making a line. Okay, that looks good. We have it on one side. I'm just going to lift it up a little. Might have to cut on the side just a tad. Okay, that's good. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Gonna gently, I've already gently picked up this side. Now I'm going to gently pick up this side. Set it down. Move this over so you can see the roof piece. Now I put my initials in it and my initials were in the front. That's kind of important. I probably should have said that earlier to mark it so you know which is the front. So this is what we have on the inside here. And then we could not coil the part. Um, you know, once we put the pieces together, we have coils on this side, but we don't have anything on this side. So what we want to do is we want to coil that.
Once our roof is completely coiled inside, we take a little tool here to bevel these edges. This is because it's going to uh, fit inside of the uh, lip. So just bevel it. Smooth it out a little bit. Turn it the other way around. I usually hold it by the inside if I'm uh, moving it around a lot. Bevel this side. Smooth it with your fingers. Kind of take a look at everything, smooth out any places where the uh, coils aren't right. You could also take your tool and make sure that the uh, seams here are good. Again, I'm going to turn this the other way. Look inside, make sure things are smooth. Set this aside. Now, uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to take these uh, lips and attach them to the sides. So, again, just sort of make sure everything is smooth. I'm going to take my scratching tool, scratch here on the side, I'm going to take my lip and scratch the inside along the edge, along the, the uh, edge where the angle is, is down. I'm not saying that really right, so let me scratch it and show you. Okay, scratch it like that because that's how we're going to adhere it. Sort of take a look and make sure it's going to fit, which it does, looks good. Put your slip here and attach. And when you attach it, I'm going to attach it, then I'll show you the other side. Try not to move your wall too much. Try to um, make sure that it stays the way uh, that, it, that it already was. In other words, don't push it out too much. I'm going to show you this side so that you can see how much uh, overlap there is. So this is maybe maybe a quarter of an inch above the, uh, the um, edge here. And I'll, again, I'll take this tool, sort of smooth it out a little bit. Take my hands, smooth this a little bit. You don't really have to um, smooth these edges completely. You just don't want them sharp, that's all. Okay, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. Then the other thing you can do if you want to is you can make a little design on the lip because the lip, uh, we're not trying to hide the fact that this lip is here to, um, you know, to hold that roof together. So I'm just going to take the, my heart shape here, make some little Impressions like so. 
try to remember what you did so you can do it on the other side. Okay, so this is done. Just you can you can check again to make sure everything on the inside that the coils are smooth and so forth. Um, one thing I don't think I did mention is when you're doing the coils where the door is here, this is a little bit thin, so you do want to be careful uh, that you don't make it, uh, you know, you don't press too hard and press that door out. So we have our house all done. We have our lip made. We have some decorations on the side. Now what we want to do is we want to take our roof, remembering which is the front. Again, you, it's, you know, so many times you need to go over this just to make sure you didn't miss something. I already see I've got some little, little clay crumbles there that I don't like. So I'm getting rid of those. All right, I'm going to show you the inside again. Everything looks good. And we're going to see if everything fits. It won't fit exactly, but we'll, we'll make it work. All right, that side is on. This side is on. Let me show you the side. So we just lift it up a little, put it down. Same thing over here. Now, what you want to think about as you look at this is to make sure that the lip doesn't uh, protrude out into the roof. You want a nice line here. And also, when you go to glaze it, you don't want anything to really stick there. So you, you just kind of want to be aware of that. In this case, I don't really think we need to make any adjustments. It looks good. Next will be the chimney. I'm going to set this aside for a minute while we make the chimney. So here are our chimney pieces that we uh, cut earlier. I'm going to lay these down and uh, make a cut. Let me show you here. See, right where the point is, straight up so that we have two pieces. Like this. Do the same thing with this piece. Here. This piece will be scratched on either side, and this will be scratched on the outside edge. Then we'll take our slip. Make sure you have the brick uh, texture on the outside, and just line it up there. Take your other uh, piece on the other side of your brick, line it up. Just make sure that the uh, that the top is um, even, and we can always adjust the bottom. So just make sure the top is even. Press it down. We don't really need to coil this. Then your other piece here, slip, and we're going to put that right on top of here. Pressing down on the edges. Just got to be a little bit careful here. You don't want to press too hard. And then I usually um, just sort of round it out a little bit on the, on the side. Press down. Make sure that everything is attached. Make sure that your top of your uh, chimney doesn't show any seams. Next, we take our little cottage. Oh, I need my uh, my turntable. Now here, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use my extruder and uh, put a, a some an extrusion right across the top here. 
just makes it look a little bit better. I am going to scratch the top. This part with the extrusion is not really absolutely necessary. It's, it's just, um, I don't know, I kind of like to do it to give it a more uh, finished look. So we, again, we don't need to scratch the extrusion. Put our slip here. Lay this with the flat side down. I'm going to cut this off at either edge. Okay. Firmly press it down. I'm going to take my chimney and scratch. Scratch where it's going to be against the uh, roof. This does need to be trimmed just if this is a little jagged here, so I am going to trim that. Now you can put your chimney on either side of your house. I'm going to put it on this side. Again, we have just scratched and now I'm putting the slip on. Don't need to scratch the, uh, the cottage itself. Don't put it all the way over on the edge. Move it over a little bit. Wiggle it around a little bit. And press. Now, I don't have a, uh, a tool to make a hole in the chimney, but I do want to, in case somebody does use a real candle in here, I do want uh, some uh, air, uh, you know, a place for the heat to escape. So I'm going to make a, a hole inside. Just use your tool and, you know, scoop, scoop it out just so that you've got a little hole. I don't think you really need to see this to tell you the truth. I think you can, you get the idea, a little hole in there. And then um, the chimney, we'll take our tool and just sort of make sure that there's no uh, no I don't know. I don't know what we're making sure. We're making sure it looks good. That's what we're making sure. And then uh, we could also put some uh, some of this extrusion. We could put it around our chimney too. That'll probably make it look a little bit uh, better. So get my extrusion. So what I will do is I will go ahead and uh, show you how to do the extrusions, uh, extrusions here and then I'll put a few little things on the front and uh, we'll be done. So to do this, I want to be careful not to get too much slip because I don't want it to get um, down here where the lip is. So I'm just going to take this and put that third part in the uh, crevice here. Cut it. 
Okay, so now that looks a little cleaner. I'll make sure that it is uh, firmly pressed in. Also make sure that it doesn't go down too far because at, when you glaze this, you just want to be sure that this roof is still going to come off. And then to finish it up, I probably would just put a little slip here and here and here and make a little uh, ball. There we go. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. I want to check one more time, make sure the roof comes off, uh, lifts up easily. Our candle house is finished except for bisque firing and glazing, of course. All the extrusions have been added. The uh, chimney is on. You can see I've added some additional uh, decorations on the uh, front here. You can, of course, do whatever you like. Um, this takes at least four to six hours to make, depending on your uh, level of expertise and uh, other unforeseen circumstances that always seem to happen when you're working with clay. It takes about six to eight pounds of clay. And then, of course, as I said, we need to bisque and glaze fire this. I have some more information in the comments below that will give you a pattern piece and uh, just a, a little bit of a write-up of instructions. So I hope you have enjoyed this and see you in the next video.